So what you feel on the inside of you that's stirring up and stirring around right now, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost. And I need you to understand that your Holy Spirit on the inside of you that you received on the day of repentance and asking God, Jesus, to come into your life. He, the Holy Spirit, the person on the inside of you, is a powerful being. Don't underestimate him. Understand that he is the third person in the Trinity, God, the Holy Spirit, living on the inside of you. And I need to remind you, and First Lady alluded to it uh, during praise and worship, I need to remind you that what you have on the inside of you, or you already have everything that you need on the inside of you. So, so I want to entitle this message, Already in You. Already in you. Everything we need as individual believers, it's already on the inside of us by way of God's power through the Holy Spirit. You must know that. You must tell yourself that. You must remind yourself. You got to remind this flesh. You know, I don't like to talk about going through all the time. I don't like to talk about problems and issues. But, but, but the fact of the matter is, we deal with problems and issues and situations every day, all day long. And, we have to, and just like we deal with it all day long, we have to remind ourselves every day that what we have and what we need is already on the inside of us. You don't have to go and you don't have to go talk to nobody. You don't have to go find anything. You don't have to go read anything. Just know the person on the inside of you, all the power, everything that you need, all the abilities, all the strength, all the wisdom, everything that you will ever need is on the inside of you already. Somebody say, already have it. When we give our life to, to when we gave our life to Christ, we were immediately equipped with everything we needed to succeed in this life. We instantly possess the ability to prosper, to reproduce, to fill the earth, and take charge. Immediately. God commanded Adam and Eve to do this from the beginning <clears throat> over in the book of Genesis. Your Holy Spirit will show you through the word of God how to tap and to what God has already installed in you for his purpose. Your Holy Spirit will show you through the word of God. God, he, he when look, when the Holy Spirit came, a whole lot of other things came with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. When you buy your car, a whole lot of other things come with just that outside pretty paint and so on and so forth. There's so many things under the hood that comes with the car when you buy the car. There's so many features on the inside that comes with the car. You're not buying no car and telling me I need to pay for air condition. Air condition comes with a car. You don't have to buy power. You don't have to tell me I'm going to order uh, uh, and go to the shop and get me some power, get, get power steering, anti-lock brakes, aerodynamics, and you got, you, got, you got the sophisticated strut system. You got cameras on the car now. You got cars that will drive in the lane and beat when you get out of your lane. And, and you have all of these features. It comes with the car. You do not have to buy anything extra. When you receive the Holy Spirit, there are so many things that come. Matter of fact, everything you need to win in this life comes with the Holy Spirit comes along with the Holy Spirit. Here is the dilemma. Here's the problem. We don't know and we forget and we need to be reminded through the word of God. The word of God tells us what we have. Proverbs 20, 27 in the King James Version. I want you to get this. I'm going to slow down enough. You'll have to listen to it again for God to give it to you because I've been working on it for a few years now. And it's, it's somewhat coming to my understanding. See, things don't work in your life until you understand it. Things don't work in your life and you don't see fruit until there's a manifestation. 
before manifestation, there's revelation. So God has to reveal and illuminate your mind. In other words, God has to give you the understanding of what he's talking about before it can become a part of your life to where you use it and it works for you. And so the Proverbs 20, 27 says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. So God's Holy Spirit lights man's human spirit. God's Holy Spirit comes into our life at birth and lights the human spirit. This mic, the word of God says, the man's human spirit is the candle of the Lord. So that means if this mic was a candle, this would be man's human spirit. If this mic was a candle, this mic represents man's human spirit. So man's human spirit is the candle. Hadn't been lit yet. The Bible says all souls are mine. God made everybody. And so all the spirits, everybody that's in this world, particularly us, we're talking about the human spirit. We're spirit, soul, and body. God made us. He made our spirit. When, because of Adam and Eve, the candle is not lit because we are still in sin. And so our human spirit is dead, dark, no light. But it's still the candle of the Lord. When we ask Jesus Christ to come into our life, the spirit of God comes and lights the candle. Our human spirit, light comes on. Remember the, the thing, the, the saying, I was blind, but now I see. You know, Ephesians talk about how we lived in darkness. Now, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit has come and has put a light, has lit the candle, the human spirit. And now the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. In your human spirit. And now you have the ability. Because of that light. To search all the inward parts. Now you have the ability. To. Understand. And receive revelation and illumination. Of what God is telling you. And what God says you have. And who God says you are. You don't automatically know what you have and who you are just because you gave your life to Christ. You do have everything you need, but you have to be taught. No child comes in this world knowing how to be an adult. They have to be taught and trained. So we have to be taught and trained. And we have to hear from God through the word of God who we are and what we have and understand that what we need is already, I'm going to keep saying this, is already on the inside of you. Let's try to break this down. Here again, when we gave our life to Christ, we were immediately equipped with everything we needed to succeed in life. We instantly possessed the ability to take charge. We instantly possessed the ability to prosper, to fill the earth. And as we look at this scripture, we see here in Proverbs 20, 27, God's Holy Spirit lights man's human spirit, which is the candle of the Lord. That light, man's human spirit, lights up his soul. All the innermost parts, all the secret parts, all the hidden parts, the private parts, the confidential parts. All of these functions of that man. Therefore, the Holy Spirit that resides in man's human spirit gives him revelation knowledge and illumination insight on how to perform God's will in the earth. God has already invested everything in us we will ever need to be successful in this life. If you really believe that, you're shouting right now. 
If that's the truth, then why do you struggle so much? Why are we up and down? Because and... we got to continue to remind this flesh. You might not know to use it or how to use it when it's time, but you still need to know that you have everything you need. God has already invested everything in us we will ever need to be successful in this, in this life. Man just has to discover within himself that which God has already created him to be. It's already there. We got to discover it. It's already created. It's already been invested. You already said you are, you are already as smart as you need to be. You're already as wise as you need to be. You're already as strong as you need to be. You're already as powerful as you need to be. You are already have every ability that you need to have. You just have to keep walking with the Lord and talking with the Lord and going through ups and downs and growing. And God is going to reveal it to you. You will not know who you are and what you have and as you move in your life and as you walk in your life you're going to start experiencing victories in certain areas and that's not a new thing with God that's just the fact that you have discovered what God has already given you you are doing things today right now that you didn't believe you could do 10 years ago it's not that all of a sudden God put it in you you just discovered and realized that it was in you in the first place it was already in you it's already 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 in you that's why it's so important to open your mouth and speak the word of God because when you open your mouth you create life when you open your mouth you agree with what God has already put in you when you open your mouth you already agree with what's going on you already agree with the power and authority that you have and when you open your mouth and you agree with it Faith begins to operate and you begin to walk and you begin to step out and you begin to do by action what you open your mouth to say. You begin to walk by action what the word of God says. You begin to believe who God says you are. You begin to believe everything God says he can do through you. And then you give so much confidence that you say, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. And so God does not want us to talk about who he is, but God wants us to be about who he is. I heard this off of them. I heard one of them sports guys talking. I heard one of them, I, I, I heard one of them athletes talking, one of the sports guys is talking. He, he said, don't talk about it, be about it. And I said, oh, that's a good one. God don't want us to just talk about how good he is. He don't want us to talk about what he can do. He don't want to talk us to talk about what great God he is and, and he's a this and that and the other. And you read the scripture. God want us to be about it. Somebody got to see who God is in us. Somebody got to see the power of God. Somebody got to see the authority of God in your life. Somebody got to see God manifested in the flesh through you, in you. This ain't hype, baby. This ain't hype. I ain't gonna calm down and be defeated after today. Come in the saints and word to get hype through praise and worship and prayer and ministry of the word and go out and live a defeated life. I'm gonna be about what I profess in here. I'm going to be about it. I'm going to be righteous. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to be wise. I'm going to be intelligent. I'm going to be powerful. I'm going to be triumphant, victorious, and overcomer. Turn and tell somebody, be about it. Because you know it used to be don't make no honey. <laughs> Got to be about it, man. Not just because you're excited and heard a good message. You got to be about it every day. Aha, 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 aha. When trouble comes, you got to be about it. Amen. Feeling in your body. About to break down. 
Don't know if you're going to make it. You got to be about it. I can do all things through Christ. I can't wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We quote that, but we waiting on God to do it. The writer says, the, the, the writer says that he can do. Oh, that tells me now you got a certain attitude going on. You got a certain confidential mindset, superior attitude, superior mindset. I can do. So he's saying that I can do this. I know what it looked like, but I still can do it. I can do. If he said I can do it, that means he will to do it. That means he purpose in his heart to do it. That means he plans to do it. That means he's got a plan and he's going to act on it. That means he believed. He believed. He ain't just saying it. He believed. I can do. I can what? I can do. I can put action. I can do. Not I can run. I can hide. I can but I can do. I can do what? I ain't never seen this before. I ain't never heard this before. Nobody ever. In all the days of my life, I've never seen, heard, experienced this. But I can do all things. Why? Because what I need is already on the inside of me. It's understood that it's God that's going to strengthen me, give me the ability to do it. I can do all things through Christ, because he's going to give me the power, the anointing, if I need glory, if I need patience, if I need joy, if I need kindness, if I need understanding, if I need revelation, if I need whatever I need. Can I just break it on down? He's going to be the great I am in my life at that time. He's going to be whatever I need him to be. And I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to repeat myself. This ain't hype. At some point in our lives, we've got to determine that we're going to stop going through the same old, same old every day, all day long for weeks and months. I am tired of talking about the devil in the same area of my life. Matter of fact, we give him too much credit. You, you've heard the term, it, 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 you, 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 it's, it, it's better to, to smile than frown. You use more muscles in your face when you frown. All them wrinkles and stuff come. So when you smile, it's better. It's better in our life if we give God praise and give him thanksgiving more than we give the devil. Always talk about the devil, 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 What about him? He's still the devil. Why are you surprised? The devil does devilish stuff. He's just the devil that devils the Satan that devil. He's just the devil and devil, a lying devil. Why are we always talking about him? Why don't we talk about, see, you got to tell this flesh about who God is and what God does. We need to, we, I wish we could track, I wish we had a watch that, that would tell us how much we talk about the devil and enemy and wrong stuff and sickness and disease and pains and problems and issues and medical this and lack of resources, lack of funding. And see, that's what you would talk about if that's all you hear. That's what you would talk about if that's all you Lend your ears and eyes to. Got to watch your gates, man. You, you, you talk about, see, a lot of us right now. And, and see, I know what I'm talking about because I've been living with y'all. I've been living with y'all. We, we, we've been together for decades. Some of us, we've been together for decades. And we still got the same pole mouth. You act like you don't read your Bible. You act like God is not a God that, 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 that delivers. You, you, you always talking about the devil. Why don't you read and talk about God? Talk about the things that God can do and will do. And then when you experience it, stay right there and talk about, I know the Lord will make a way. I know the Lord will help me. I know the Lord will cure me. I know the Lord will give me strength. I know the Lord will do what I need. I know the Lord will protect me. I know the Lord... 
will make a way. I know the Lord. He's good. I've experienced it over and over and over again. Yeah, you could talk about the devil, but what good is it? I know the Lord is a way maker. I know the Lord is a burden bearer. I know the Lord is a provider. I know the Lord, he's good. His mercy endureth forever. I know the Lord. <laughs> I know the Lord. He's the keeper of my soul. He's everything I need him to be. He's my shepherd and I shall not walk. He's my provider. He's my... Uh, He's my deliverer. He's my sword and shield. He's my way maker. He's my peace giver. He is everything that I do. He is the one that helps me to breathe. He is the air that I breathe. He controls everything about me. He controls my mind, my brain cell, my right, my left, my extremities. Everything. He controls. He contro yes, he does. He controls my blood, my heart, my liver, everything that's about me. Woo! And then on, when I mess up, he's a God of restitution. He restores my soul. Oh, my God. He's an awesome God. Now I feel him, I feel him, I feel him, I feel him, I feel him every day. Every day, every day, every, every day is a, thanks, is a day of thanksgiving. So God don't want us to just talk about him. He wants us to be about him. I heard John, 1 John chapter 4 verse 17b says, As he is, so are we in this world. He's powerful, we are powerful. He's all-knowing. We know most of the things as we listen to him. He's an overcomer. So in order for us to be who he is in this world, we must grow in Christian virtue. I know I'm telling you to tell somebody a lot of stuff today, but I need you to talk to them and tell them. Trying to tell somebody, grow up. Grow up. Oh, tell them like this. You just need to grow up. You just need to grow up. Ooh, she told me. That's part of your problem. You just need to grow up. You still acting. I'm going to say it my way. You still acting up like a baby. Don't feel good, you cry. Can't have your way, you cry. Somebody look at you, you cry. Somebody touch you, you cry. The Lord says you need to do this and that and the other, you cry. The Lord says you need to stop doing that, you cry. Because the Lord says you need to start doing the other, you cry. You got to get away from that milk and the desire, the sincere, you desire the sincere milk of the word. But there are times when you got to move from dead works and you got to get off that milk and get to some meat. Because God needs to use you and he wants to use you, but your problem is he can't use you because you're still in grade school. And so 2 Peter says this, he, he, so we're talking about, we, we, we're talking about the fact that, 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 that. We need to grow in Christian virtue M means that we need to grow in righteousness. You ain't good enough yet. You look, you, 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 you know just enough to be dangerous. You think you know a whole lot. Your righteousness is like filthy rags, man. You got you to come out of that. You got to come up out of that. Your righteousness need to grow. Your goodness need to grow. Your integrity need to grow. Your honesty and your uprightness need to grow. You still halfway telling lies. Second Peter, first chapter, verse three to 11 in the living Bible. We're going to move through this. The Bible says in second Peter, first chapter, verse three in the living, in the, in the living Bible, verse three says, for as you know him better, he will give you through his great power. As you come to know God better, he's going to give you through his great power. What is he going to give you? Everything you need for living a truly good life. I can stop right here and just let you meditate on that and tell your spirit man so that your soul man can get it every day. 
everything you need for living a true good life. He even shares his own glory and his own goodness with us. What's your problem? We share the glory of the Lord and we share the goodness with, with God because we're his children. He says, so we talked about that we know him better. He will give you through his great power. So he says, and by that same mighty power in verse four, he has given us all the other rich and wonderful blessings. He promised. He has given us all the other rich and wonderful blessings he has promised. Then he goes and he said, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, let me tell you what I'm talking about. He said, for instance, the promise to save us from the lust and rottenness all around us and to give us his own character. So God picked us up out of the muck and the mire. He saved us, got us out of the world, all of that foolishness. And he has saved, look, at he, look, what, look, what, look, what, look what the word calls the world. It says from the lust and rottenness all around us. Pull you out of the gutter. Pull you out of that foolishness. Why in the world would you want to hang with them folk? Why in the world would you want to do that? Why in the world would you want to go over there? Go over there. God has pulled you out of that lust and rottenness. And not only has he pulled you out of that, he didn't pull you out and leave you alone. He says he pulled us out and gave us his own character. <laughs> then he says, verse 5, he says, but to obtain these gifts, you need more than faith. Oh, Lord. Oh, I just messed somebody up because all they thought they had to do was claim that they have faith and claim that they believe. And the rest was going to take care of itself. But that's not what he's saying because he says you got to add something here. He says you've got to understand what's already in you, but you got to access that. you got to understand that you have an investment in you by the Holy Spirit, but you got to know how to tap into that. And so he goes on to say, he says, but to attain these gifts, you need more than faith. You must also, uh-oh. I just messed somebody up because they're still waiting on God to do it. You must also work hard to be good. It ain't automatic. You got to put forth some effort. And even that is not enough. He says when you work hard to be good, got something else. For then you must learn to know God better and discover what he wants you to do. You got to sit yourself down, cut off all this other stuff that comes to you and hear from God and meditate and let God talk to your spirit man and quiet yourself and hear what it is that God wants you to do. You're Having problems and issues in your life because you're selfish. All you think about is yourself. All you talk about is yourself. What you're doing, what you're going through, what you don't have, what you're missing, what your problem is. God wants you to actually sit down and add to what you're doing. You know why you feel bad? Because you ain't helping nobody else feel good. You feel bad all the time because all you think about is how you feel. Whew, I know I ain't going to finish. Let me tell you a secret. We are speaking beings. Even when I preach, I'm preaching to myself. Even when I preach, I go and I watch these tapes because God helps me. I don't see me when I'm preaching. I see and hear the word of God. That's why I watch him. That's when I preach to you. Like Paul says, I become a castle. He preaching all that stuff and he defeated. That's kind of crazy. So I go watch it myself so I can help. Because what I'm saying is not from me anyway. It's from God. And so we, and so, and so we have to understand that God will help us and he'll deliver us When you talk to somebody else and help them, you don't know what they need, but God knows. And so what God does is he uses you, an audible voice, an action in the flesh to speak to them and to help them. The good thing about that is, is some of that that God gives to you to tell them and give to them, you actually need it yourself. As a matter of fact, you didn't really realize you needed it until you spoke it out for them. Amen. You ever gave somebody a gift and you said, oh, I need that too? You ever gave somebody a gift and said, oh, I like that for myself? I think I'll go find me one. I bought gifts for people. I said, oh, I'm going to get me one too. Mm -hmm. 
if you do that often enough, you're going to be blessed by the words of your own mouth. Most of us are cursed by the words of our own mouth. And we're messing up folks around us. Mm -hmm. Think about folks that are around you, that's connected with you and around you a lot and often. Are they upbeat, up-tempo, excited, or are they dragging like you? Or are they complaining like you? Do they act like they don't know the Lord? What, 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 what's going on with people that's connected to you? Better watch your mouth. Understand. I'll be back. That what you have and what you need, or should I say you got to understand what you need, is already on the inside of you. You've got to stop hearing a good word. <clears throat> And go back home and do business as usual. Because if you do what you've always done, you will have what you've always had. Thank you for listening. God bless you. We'll see you next time. At this time. <laughs>